Welcome to a fully postseason edition of the LL Spring Sports Roundtable brought to you by Penn Medicine, Lancaster General Health, sports medicine. Poetic, isn't it? Nice. Anyway, I'm your host, Mike Gross. To my left is John Walk. To my right is Jeff Reinhardt. I had a fan the other day say to me, I love the way you do that, the way you say to my left and to my right. I said, well, whatever you like, uh, we, we aim to please. So anyway, but we, we have a lot of stuff beyond that, beyond yes. stage direction. At least one person out there is watching. Is what, That's true. <laughs> what a relief. What a relief. All right. uh, anyway, we're into the postseason. We're into the district playoffs yes. in uh, everything. everything. And we're going to start with John and his weekly remote. Yeah, we finally did it. We finally caught up with Niall Abadir, the tennis phenom out at Lancaster Country Day. And it's a bit timely considering the Cougars are coming off what was a runner-up finish as a team in the state 2A uh, finals, essentially. They Impressive. went down to the wire, came down to the final doubles match. They end up losing 3-2 to the District 12 champ, Masterman. Oh. Anyway, um, so now uh, congrats to, to the Cougars state runner-up finish. So now uh, Niall Abadir and Freddie Bloom from Country Day go into singles competition huh. in states, as do Cooper Lehman from Hempfield, Michael Georgellis from Township, and 3A singles. And then we got three doubles teams, one from Lancaster Catholic, one from Peckway Valley, and one from Lancaster Mennonite. So all that starts Friday, double singles states competition. So with that in mind, we decided we finally caught up with Niall Abadir uh, practicing out at Lancaster Country Club. So we'll throw it to Niall to chat about the season and all things tennis. Before we get to this season, um, let's back up a little bit. For those who are unfamiliar with your tennis journey, where did it begin? How'd you get started? Uh, I started tennis when I was four or five years old. My parents played and I came to one of their matches and I kind of fell in love with just the back and forth and constant movement. So that's where I started and I've been playing ever since and just falling more in love with the game. This season, another good one for you. Uh, first off, I want to chat about your teammate, Freddie Bloom, who's actually behind you as we chat here. Um, how cool is it to, to have a number two there that's that good, constantly challenging you all the time? Yeah, Freddie's a, a great challenger and, and a great friend. We've been best buds for, for a while now, so he's someone I can chat about tennis with or not, not with tennis. Um, he, he's, he always pushes me whether I'm in practice. We, we play here a lot, actually, uh, off-season, in-season. So year-round, he's a great competitor and someone to push me. You guys have racked up a lot of medals and trophies as a doubles partners. Um, uh, what I don't know, that, that aspect, when you got to come together uh, as teammates, um, what makes you guys effective out here in the court? Uh, we definitely have a lot of experience together. Since we've known each other since we were young kids, we played doubles with each other in practice for years. So we came into the season kind of knowing how to transition, switch sides without even talking. So we are just a natural doubles team this year. Uh, Coach Michael Jordan out here at Lancaster Country Club um, was saying, I was just picking his brain, okay, what has Niall gotten better at the last 12 months? Bigger, stronger, faster was his response. How do you kind of answer that? Yeah, um, I put on a lot of muscle this year just trying to hit more weights and train harder um, and more often. So that's definitely been a, been a big factor in trying to clean up my diet a little as well. So. And with that muscle being added, your serve is up about 10 miles per hour. You're not into the 120s as opposed to the 110s last year? Yeah, 110s, I could, I could push the 120s last year, but not consistently. And this year it's just coming a little more efficiently. I mean, I've been trying to focus more on like hitting my spots, but I, I do love hitting hitting uh, the ball really fast. So. And in terms of, yeah, when you're out here in the court, what you've added to your game, coach was saying you're more of an attack now. What does that look like? Yeah, I'm always looking at opportunities to come into the net. So I see a short ball, I'm, I'm going to come in. Whether Maybe it's not even super short and it's just a more neutral ball, you'd say. I try to take that and come in, whereas other players might wait one or two more shots. So I'm always trying to look, pre uh, look to put pressure on the opponent. By the time folks watch this, this will be Wednesday. Uh, states will be coming up for you. Who are some opponents class two-way that you're really looking forward to going up against? Yeah, so from Masterman, I hope I'll see uh, Ajay Sheth again. He was my second round last year, and I actually have played him many times in the USDA circuit, which is the uh, competitive um, circuit of tennis outside of high school. So, uh, again, especially Nicholas Scheller, who I played in the finals last year, he'll be on the bottom side of the bracket with Freddie. So maybe I'll see him or Freddie. We don't know. Um, but, yeah, those are, those are some of the names I can remember that, aren't, that haven't graduated yet. 
All right, thanks to Niall for that. And by the way, Niall has had one heck of a junior season. Um, again, state teams runner up. They were also the LL and District 3 2A team champions mm. were Lancaster Country Day. And then Niall and teammate Freddie Bloom were the LL 2A doubles champions. Wow. And Niall to this point has won the LL Class 2A and District 3 2A singles championships. And again, going for back-to-back -back state crowns coming up. And he's a junior. Yes. We get to chat about him again next yeah. spring. Yep, it'll be interesting wow. to see. Uh, the, Apparently, he's going to play like pro over the summer, but not take any money in order wow. to stay amateur. So, yeah, you can yeah. do that in tennis. Yeah. There, yeah. There's ways to, yeah, yeah. it's interesting. That yeah. does it for tennis. <laughs> Good for him. Softball, baby. Softball. Um, six teams still playing from the Lancaster Lebanon League. Beautiful. And uh, last night, the first round of district playoffs, and almost all last night. I'll get to that in a minute. And a really dramatic game. The game of the night was uh, Warwick. Uh, and Wilson at Warwick. Mm. Uh, Wilson, I mean, Warwick scored three in I think the first inning, kind of nursed the lead to the end. They get to the seventh inning. They're leading four to three. Wilson gets the winning, the tying run to third base. Boy. They, this is pretty cool. They try to suicide squeeze. Nice. And they, they bunt it to the first base side. Sam, I guess Samantha Jack, Shock, Sam Shock uh, the, yeah. the first baseman for Warwick, makes a nice play, pounces on the, and she could have done that quick toss to the catcher and all that, which would have been hard. I thought she made a very smart move, which was to kind of lunge and make the unassisted put out, nailing the runner barely. It was wow. a close play at the plate. So that's the second out. The next hitter sends a, sends a fly ball down the third baseline and Allison Forsyth, mm -hmm. the left fielder for Warwick, in foul territory, tumbling into the lawn chairs nice. and everything, makes the catch, nice. wow. and Warwick wins wow. it four to three to advance Good to the them. next round where they will play the winner of Hemfield and Dallas Town, which is the only first round district game that's being played Tuesday. right now. It's been, well, in a couple hours, it's be played tonight. So that could be an all LL uh, district quarterfinal in class 6A. Also in 6A last night, the game that our man Dave Byrne covered Manheim Township 12 to nothing over Governor Mifflin. That's impressive. Uh, Megan Marks pitches the shutout. Mm. Township stole seven bases. Really aggressive on the base pass, took nice. all, all, all kinds of taking the extra base type stuff. Township is interesting because a couple weeks ago they had a losing record. They didn't wow. even qualify for the league playoffs and it looked like they weren't going to make districts. Mm. They've won five out of the last six. They've scored 57 runs Whoa. in their last five games. So they're almost averaging 12 runs a game. Interesting that the uh, township seems to be putting it together at the right time. However, their next game will be against the top seed in 6A, oh which boy. is Central York at Central York. That's Thursday. All these quarterfinals wow. uh, are Thursday. Now in 5A, our old uh, perennial LS uh, is the third seed, and they defeated Northern York 6-3, to and they will play in the next round, uh -oh. Twin Valley. Oh, that's one of their, the, uh, yeah, yeah, one of their old nemesis, wow. Twin Valley. That, that's gonna be a little bit of a theme here. There's one of those in baseball too. Uh, <laughs> but those teams are, neither of those teams are quite vintage additions. They have, they have a, uh, Twin Valley has six losses. They beat Solanco five to one last night. So uh, that, that was the end of uh, Solanco for the season. But anyway, Twin Valley and LS in the quarterfinals on Thursday. Wow. Northern Lebanon, uh, section three champions, 17 and three. Uh, they lost to Warwick in the LL playoffs. Uh, they will play Fleetwood in a four to five seed matchup uh, uh, on Thursday. Nice bus trip for Fleetwood, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, they'll anyway, be, they'll be playing football. Uh, they'll be so, playing football so that's where we are uh, uh, headed to the, and that's it. That's all we have left in uh, in softball. So. Brian's Woo, swiping bags, streaks. Yeah, I like it. Seven I like steals. It. Uh, I love it. it. Yeah, very aggressive. That's how the blue streaks, they uh, aptly named blue yeah, streaks. Good I for think, them, right? Good for them. Uh, let's volley a little bit. Right? Volleyball, three teams <laughs> left. That's all we have here. Three, uh, but good stuff. Tuesday, as we record, uh, two matches Tuesday night, one on Wednesday night. Here we go. Here's the lowdown. Triple A, LL champ, Warwick, fourth seed. Tough trip here for the Warriors. They must gas up the bus and go to Harrisburg on Tuesday night and play the one seed, Central Dolphin. The Rams are really good, they're undefeated. Yeah. They won the Bobcats, uh, they won the Kohler. Um, 
they're the one seed, and I think they're like number two in the state in the state ranking. So the Rams are really good. So tough trip for Warwick. Triple A, see how they do. 2A, Tuesday night, garden spot, the four seed. Tough trip for the Sparty Nation. They go to Lower Dolphin in Hummelstown. LD is the reigning state, 2A champ. Boom, they're really good. They're the one seed. I think they have like one loss this season. They're really good. So Warwick and Garden Spot Tuesday night, semifinal matches, stiff tests to say the least. Warwick is in states. Top four in AAA are in. So win or lose tonight, Warwick will have a championship match Thursday or a third place match Thursday. And the Warriors will play in states next Tuesday in the first round. Uh, Garden Spot, LD in 2A, the top three finishers go to states. So if Garden Spot loses, they dip into a third place must win match on Thursday. Wednesday is the other 2A semifinal. Mannheim Central, Barons beat Lancaster Mennonite on Saturday in the first round quarterfinals. Great match. Huh. Mennonite came back at a 2-1 lead and Central turned on the Jets and won and knocked out the Section 2 champs, their rival. Barons are the sixth seed. Um, everybody else is playing Tuesday. York Suburban, the two seed, asked if they could play this on Wednesday. Probably something going on. Senior, yeah, senior a lot award. of that this time of year. A lot of that this time of year. So the winner and losers are both going to have to turn around and play on Thursday. That's a lot of volleyball. Top notch. A lot of action volleyball for back-to-back -back nights. So Mannheim Central at York Suburban, the two seed. A lot of history between those two teams. In 2019, right before COVID, er, Central beat York Suburban to win the district championship. Two weeks later, York Suburban returned the favor, beat the Barons in the state semifinals. Earlier this season, York Suburban beat Central 3-1. to one. So they know each other. Big match on <clears throat> Wednesday. Tuesday night, I'll be covering Warwick at CD. The other semifinal in AAA, by the way, is Palmyra and Cumberland Valley. Good matchup. Wednesday, I'll be covering Mannheim Central at York Suburban. Finals, Thursday, tri uh, AAA at Dallas Town. 2A at Central York. The third place matches will be at the uh, home team with the higher seed. Uh, and oh, by the way, if Garden Spot and Mannheim both get tripped up, they would play each other on Thursday, and that would be at Garden Spot because they're the higher seed. Like a third place game? Third place match, yeah. losers done. done. Winner goes to states on Tuesday. Ah. And they're big rivals, they split their season series. That could happen, but yeah. they win, they go to the title games on Thursday. Um, State rankings came out on Monday, by the way. Mannheim Central's nine, Garden Spot's 10 in 2A. Warwick is number four in the state in AAA. That's pretty good. Uh, that's it, three teams I'm left. always interested in how sports evolve over time, and it seems like for so long volleyball was York County, yes. Lancaster County, now these mid-pen schools. Maybe it's Ooh, not yeah. new to, maybe it's not new to anybody but yeah. me, but it seems like those schools are really emerging. CD, Central Dolphin, uh, LD, Cumberland Valley. And Cumberland Valley. They're really good. Which are good in, those Palmyra. schools are good in most sports. Yes, yeah. they are. And I guess they have more boys coming Plus around to play in the spring. Coaching turnovers at Penn Manor, at yes. Hemfield. Yes. Uh, and, there's more, and Northeastern as well within the yes. last three Oh, years. okay. Yeah. Hemfield, Hemfield, the league runner up, is out. They lost to Cumberland Valley oh, on wow. Saturday. Three to, was that three two? Three mm. one. So the Black Knights are out. So Warwick, Garden Spot, Mannheim Central, District Semis. Title matches, third place matches on Thursday. That's your volleyball report. One of the big events of every high school spring is uh, the big track meets and oh, yeah. district track meet was Love this it. past weekend. Love it. State's coming up at Shippensburg University. John will tell us more. Yeah, so credit to uh, Steve Navaroli to all of his reporting over the weekend. It is a bear day Tireless. one, day two, districts. There's so many events. There's now 2A, 3A. Uh, with that said, coming out of the weekend, uh, going down the list, there's 34 LL League um, throwers, runners who placed within the top three, class 2A, 3A. I'm not going to mm. list all of them here. Um, but of those 34, Six took home first place gold medals. Uh, I'll start in 2A girls. Teresa Moore, Lancaster Catholic, yeah. in the high jump, five yeah. feet two inches. Um, and then 3A girls, McCaskey had a big day, 
four by 800 meter relay, mm. first place, nine minutes, 28.16 seconds. Uh, Bruninger, Hartel, Rudder, Wanger there. Um, big day for Bruninger. I do want to give her another shout out as mm. far as collecting uh, multiple medals uh, to go along with that first place medal from the four by eight. Milana got a second place runner up, uh, what would be a what, silver medal in the 3A 800 meter run. Mm. Um, and then Camya Wright, her teammate, got second place silver medal in the 200 meter dash. First place is uh, in 3A in the field. High jump, Katie Becker from Warwick, five feet, 10 inches. Another Katie in the pole vault, Katie Irvine from yes. Solanco, 12 feet. If you remember a week ago at LLL, she did 12.5, yeah. but due to inclement weather last week, it, it went inside. indoors. She jumps 12, still gets first place. Nice. Um, two a, Why is it harder to pole vault indoors? You would think it'd be easier. I don't uh, cover tracks. So. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe, you're running the, on maybe if you got wind in your back, it helps you go faster. That's good. But if it's, <laughs> if it's coming at you, it probably doesn't help. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure. All I'm right. not sure because there's no okay. wind in there. Track, co out there. track coach is watching this. Just want to smack yeah, you. Yeah, it all straight it um, 2A boys, first place, Noah Gunderson, Anvil Cleona, and the high jump. Six feet, six inches. Um, there nice. were no uh, other first places there, but I do want to give a shout out to Mason Moore from Lancaster Catholic, who had a big day. Uh, second place in the 1600 meter run, mm. second place in the 800 meter run, and then ran the final leg of the four by 400 meter relay for a Catholic, which took third place. Uh, so he had a busy afternoon. Um, and then also shout out to Rogan Harder, from Anvil Anvil. Cleona, 100 meter dash placed third, mm. and then 200 meter dash placed third as well. Mm. Um, and then finally, 3A boys, no first place there, but the distance guys uh, do want to give a shout out to the 1600 meter run. Tyler Stevens from Mannheim Township uh, took third in the 1600 meter run, followed right behind him, Jacob Smith from Warwick, Aiden Hodge from Hemfield, and then the 3200 meter mm. run, Aiden Hodge from Hemfield places third right behind him is Tyler Stevens. So those guys yeah. go back and forth. And then Jacob Smith uh, took second place in the 800 meter run. So those three guys uh, had a busy afternoon. Um, so yeah, the, the district three track and field championships in the book states coming up. Unbelievable. There you have it. All right, how about some baseball? Before we go to baseball, I want to mention, I completely neglected to mention Penn Manor in softball. They're 18 and two. They're the number two seed in 6A. They did not play last night because they got a bye. Got a bye. Uh, but and the anyway. LL champion. Uh, and they are the LL yeah. champion, and they probably are one of the best teams we have in spring sports. Yes, John. Uh, Tom yeah. Tomer. Yeah. <laughs> you had to throw that in there. Did you see there that? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> LL champions. All LL right. Champions. Baseball. Uh, same schedule essentially as uh, softball. So the quarter, the first round was uh, mm. last night, Monday, and the quarterfinals will be on uh, Thursday. Let's start with 5A. This is a class where we're our league is always good because we have so many schools, I think. But but we have uh, we have four teams in the quarterfinals in 5A. That's wow. out of a possible eight. And interestingly, none of them play each other in the quarterfinals. Wow. So we could have a bunch of 5A teams playing baseball uh, for, for a while here. I was at Mannheim Central, uh, two to one game, really well pitched by those two, uh, those two stud pitchers for Central. Jared Murray uh, went the first six innings and then Connor Rohrer came on when Jared got near his pitch limit and uh, got some big outs in the seventh inning. It was a tight, tense game against New Oxford, two to one. Mm. The Barons scratched out a run in the seventh. Mason Weaver, remember the catcher that we did that oh, video yeah. feature on? Mason yeah. Weaver went yeah. three for three with a walk and scored both runs in, in this game. Anyway, wow. he gets on and uh, went to second. He got a single, went to second uh, on an error, went to third on a ground ball. New Oxford did the load the bases with intentional really? walks, draw the infield wow. in thing, um, and it didn't work because Cade uh, 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 Connolly of, uh, of uh, Central put the ball in play, and there was a play at the plate, Ooh. but it was pretty close, but it was clear he was clearly safe. Uh, so, by the way, New Oxford's uh, pitcher was also named Mason Weaver. It was ha, fun world. fact, fun fact. Cool. So anyway, uh, Central advances and gets Guess who? Oh. Redland. Oh. In the, in the district quarterfinals. Wow. Uh, Redland, not even close to what they've been the last couple years. They have eight losses, but okay. they did, you know, they did win last night. And that game will be at Central on Thursday. Central will nice. be hosting as the number two seed. Um, LS, 
Got a really good win last night against uh, Mechanicsburg, I, I think it was, Mechanicsburg, yeah. and who was the number three seed uh -huh. and was like 16-3. and three. Wow. Uh, And the interesting thing there is, that was a, no, that's not right. That was an eight and nine seed game. And Muhlenberg, the number one seed in 5A, lost to Gettysburg eight to seven in extra innings last night. Wow. So now Donegal, whose strength is pitching depth, okay will be playing against a 16 seed on its home field wow. that probably burned through a lot of pitching last oh, night because it was an eight to seven extra that? inning game. So Donegal now 15 and six, quietly they've had a pretty nice season under the radar and it could get a chance to be uh, above the radar so one, really a one, soon. A one beat a 16, or 16 beat a one. That is correct. So Muhlenberg. That is correct. Uh, Gettysburg was, over Muhlenberg. Was Muhlenberg the Burks champ? No, no, Governor Mifflin was the Mifflin Burks champ. Mifflin was the Burks champ. But remember, Donegal in the regular season beat Muhlenberg 10 to nothing oh, and no right. hit. And no hitter. <laughs> so maybe they wanted a piece of Watch Muhlenberg. out for Donegal. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe Muhlenberg was looking ahead to Donegal. Maybe. Uh, anyway. Can't do um, that. Can't overlook the Indians. No, no, no. LS with a really nice win also last night. This was kind of a, a seed upset. Three to two against, that was the one against Mechanicsburg. Okay. Uh, and and uh, Justin Long uh, pitched. Uh, pitched a great game for LS and also hit a home run in the top of the seventh inning to nice. win it three to two. Nice. Uh, so that was another, I mean, those really good wins there. And, and also in 6A, let's move on to 6A. Um, uh, Hempfield got a nice win. They beat uh, Cedar Cliff 6 0. Wow. Austin Dunlap pitching the shutout. Uh, they get Governor Mifflin next on Thursday. That will be obviously a very, very serious challenge. And then the other teams we still have playing are teams that got buys. Warwick and Manheim Township in 6A, they, they will be hosting on Thursday. And uh, Lancaster Catholic in 4A, nice. they will be hosting. That'll be a, actually be a semifinal because it's a small field Smaller, right? against Burke's Catholic, who oh. they, I think they thought from the beginning of the season was one of the teams that they would have to get past to win district. So six teams still playing. Pretty I good. Got a, I got a question. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen a lot of baseball this spring. Just a silly question, but I'll ask because I watch tons of MLB. Do high school teams shift? Have you seen shifts? No. Have you seen the third baseman play no. in the outfield or anything? No, they stupid? don't. And, and, and here's, I think this is why. Um, most high school coaches are big believers in putting pressure on the defense. Fundamental. So they would bunt every time. Nice. They would bunt, if they, if they saw a shift, they'd bunt every time. Yeah. A lot of these coaches would bunt, bunt a lot anyway. Okay. But, and obviously in high school, as opposed to Major League Baseball, there is more value in putting pressure on the on the defense. Yeah. And, yeah. We had the township coach on last spring, remember? Matt Kirchhoff. And I think we asked him about shifts and he said, nope, fundamentals, We'll bunt him over. We'll, well the bases. shift is not unfundamental, but but yeah. it, it's but he really believes in it. He yeah. really believes in bunting that. and and, and, uh, and move generally the over. pitch by pitch. The head coach is calling each pitch, like telling. Yeah, the, the head coach calls the pitches. Slacker, yeah, fastball. That's correct. Uh, yeah, that's wasn't true. sure how much that's trickling down. New the yeah. new MLB with the <laughs> all that garbage. But well, know, yeah, but I mean the. the the, the three true outcomes thing is a lot more of a bigger factor in MLB. And yeah. also, it's more value. Again, it's more valuable to put pressure on the defense at sure. the high school. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good answer. So, there you have it. Um, Lax me. All right. What do we have? Lax. All right. Into lacrosse and what is what district semis for boys as we record this Tuesday. So, we will know who's into the finals. I'll get to that in a second. We do know on the girls' side, Class 3A, District 3, Mannheim Township has advanced to the district final, which will be Wednesday, Harrisburg, Central Dolphin Middle School, Landis Field, Speed Eversall Stadium. Oh, yeah. Uh, if that title isn't long enough already for you. Uh, the Blue Streaks will be going for what would be their 10th district crown. They've won nine to this point. A new face here. They're going to face off against Governor Mifflin, who's on a bit of a Cinderella-like run as a mm. sixth seed. They beat Cumberland Valley in the quarterfinals, and then they went to Hemfield on Monday. They're down eight to four at halftime. Exit Kelsey Dagg, mm. uh, like 30 seconds into the second half, she gets her second yellow card. So that takes her out pretty much the rest of the game, essentially, um, because she has two yellow cards she can't play any longer. Well, Kelsey Degg's the leading scorer for Hempfield, and she handles draw control duty. She leaves, mm. and Governor Mifflin's best player, Eliza Enriquez, handles draw controls, and she's probably their best scorer. So 
boom, they come back 8-4, they're down, they take the lead 10-9, they end up winning 12-11, they knock wow. off a uh, second seed at Hemfield. So Governor Mifflin advances to a district final for the first time in program history. Curious to see how uh, Township will handle the draw control. That's an area that they've kind of been under development all season and going up against a really good player. And Eliza Enriquez is going to Westchester. Um, they have three players going to play next level. It does Governor Mifflin, but then Township, I'm sure, probably has half a dozen. Um, meanwhile, Hempfield girls have qualified for states. They will go to the third place consolation game against Wilson. Boys, by the time you guys watch this, hop over to the Lancaster Online Lacrosse page after you're done watching it, I should say, uh, to figure out the results from district semifinals from Tuesday night. Cocalico uh, was into the district semis for the first time in program history. Nice. LS was looking to advance to a, district, to a district final for what would be the first time in program history. Meanwhile, fourth matchup between Mannheim Township and Hempfield and 3A boys semis. Hempfield went to Township Tuesday evening uh, and Basically, the winner of that advances to the district final. Oh, all the, the boys' district finals will be played Thursday, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock. I believe it's 3A's at 5 and 2A's at 7. Um, and that, again, is at Ritt Central Dolphin Middle School. So we have overall eight teams going to states, but we can chat, chat about more. Eight? Chat that, yeah, wow, chat about wow. more. When do you sleep, week. John? Right. And I also have two tiny children at home. So this week's tough because it's you're just on the road late every week. Tiny every children? Day. Holy so. cow. Uh, <laughs> we'll all get right. through it. All right, every year the Lancaster Lebanon League gives Brackbill Awards yes. for academic and athletic yes. excellence. Yes. And we have the winners, Jeffrey. Uh, yes, the A. Landis Brackbill Scholar Awards. Oh. Mr. Yes, Mr. Brackbill was uh, the former principal at Manor High School, which turned into Penn Manor. Mm -hmm. He was the first executive director of the LL League Sports. So this award is named after him. His family still supports it. And they have a top boy and a top girl every year. The banquet was this week. And the winners were, you mentioned Kelsey Daig from Hemfield. Miss Daig won the Girls Award and the Boys Award. Garrett Campagna. I hope I'm saying that right. Campagna. I think so. Might from Mannheim that. Township. Okay, here, here are their uh, resumes. <laughs> this is off the top of my head. Uh, Kelsey, field hockey, all-star, and a... Crackerjack lacrosse player, obviously. Yep. Yes, John? Yes. F fantastic. Uh, she's going to Eastern Michigan. Correct. D1 scholarship to play lacrosse. Um, Kelsey Day, congrats to her. Garrett Campagna, soccer in the fall for the Blue Streaks. And lacrosse in the spring for the Blue Streaks. All-star kid. Uh, the other thing I liked about Kelsey, she was All-American in lacrosse. Which is and she's wild. probably going to be again this year. Again, which yeah. is really impressive. This. This one blew me away. Garrett's going to MIT. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> wow. Uh, he's going to MIT to play lacrosse. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. That's really impressive. So good for him. Uh, awards are uh, based on uh, athletic prowess, obviously. And uh, you got to have a 3.5 GPA to be nominated. And you got to play. If you're two, going to two MIT, sports. I think you got that. Coming. I think Garrett was safe there. Yes. That's impressive. All right, well, Good congrats for him. to those congrats kids. Congrats to those Excellent. guys. Good and, uh, you know, it's the start of the spring, end of the year award season, and we'll have LMP Athletes of the Year coming up. But we're not wearing tuxedos on this No, show. we're not going to have a banquet. That's well, not going to happen. Sorry. I that's draw the line soon. there. Not Stay to make this show any longer, but a really cute little note on Kelsey Dagg. I was asking mm -hmm. her uh, after their uh, loss on Monday, but just kind of talking to her about Brackville. Hey, mm -hmm. what are you going to study at the next level? And she said she wants to do a major in prosthetics or orthotics. And I'm like, oh, do oh. you have a history in that? Yeah, Did I you break it. a bone? She's like, well, the movie Dolphin Tail, oh. um, if anybody had seen that, is basically what planted that seed in her. So she combined that with passion to want to help others. So that's what she plans at studying at the next level. Good for her. Yeah. Sounds like she was perfect for this. One last LL note. Friday night, Mannheim Central, LL Tri-County All-Star football game. <laughs> football in that's May. That's a false word. It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, that Friday night at Mannheim Central, 7 o'clock. At halftime, they'll have the Mannheim Touchdown Club Players of the Year. Good stuff. So a little football this weekend. East-West games are Sunday. Big 33 is Monday. I can chat about that stuff next week and wrap it up. But a little pigskin coming this weekend. Look out. And we're done. <laughs> this has been the LL Spring and other season yeah. sports roundtable brought to you by Penn Medicine, Lancaster General Health, sports medicine. John Walk, Jeff Reinhardt, Mike Gross. See you later.